I am here at Myron's Extreme Machines, home of the Electric Bicycle Center, here with Sam. How's it going, Sam? Good, good. Well, we wanted to, you know, look around the shop today and talk about maintenance on electric bikes because, you know, so many people get one of these and it works initially and everything is great, but, you know, you might have the chain start squeaking or maybe you get a flat tire or things like that. And I wanted to pick your brains because you've been doing this for, I mean, how long have you been doing electric bikes? Um, like full time, probably a little over a dozen years now. A dozen years, geez. That's like the very beginning of when this started in the US mm -hmm. as far as I've seen. So you're pretty knowledgeable. Uh, why don't we just dive into it? Like where should we start? You know, when we sell an electric bike, we tell the customer to bring it back for a free tune up. And then they ask, well, when is that? How do I know when to bring it in for a tune up? Some people come back within the first month. Some people I don't see for a year. It really depends on how much you ride your bike. Yeah. And how do I know when I need to do my tune-up? You'll know because the derailleur's out of adjustment, it's not shifting gears as smoothly, the cables stretch maybe, and the brakes need adjusting. And something that we learned a few years ago with a, uh, a product that had a big 500 watt motor was when the big guys over 280 to 320 pounds were riding them, yeah. they would actually stretch the spokes. Oh. And within the first month, uh, they needed to bring it back in, is what we tell them to lace it up and true the rear wheel and get those loosened spokes tightened back up again. Without doing that, we started to see a pattern of about seven, eight, nine customers busting spokes. Huh. And once you have three or four broken spokes, it's all downhill from there. Okay, good to know. Okay, so that's one of those, again, like a finer point. It depends on how you ride, your body type, all that. So I don't know, we wanna start off with the drivetrain on this since that's something well, everyone. That... Let's let's start with this. What can I do at home is what most people ask. Perfect. What's the maintenance <laughs> that I should do on the bike? So there's two things I tell customers. Of course, keep your battery maintained, charge your battery. Yeah. Duh, that's a no brainer. The second most important thing, in my opinion, on an electric bike, and I've literally had a lady drive an hour and a half to come to my store who swore up and down her battery was defective, it was bad. You can't even go 100 yards and my bike shuts down. She showed up with her bike with 18 PSI in her tires. Oh. You've gotta keep your tire pressure maintained and bicycles lose tire pressure very quickly. I cannot stress that enough. That's true, and with changing temperature, I think that can kind of deflate the tire over time. You say PSI, pounds per square inch? Yes, so, right. you know. You know, make sure that you read in your manual or even on the side of the tire how much tire pressure you should have in there. Yeah. And I would say every two weeks, maybe even three weeks, a minimum once a month, you got to check your pressure okay. or it'll start to affect the range. It'll start to affect the performance and the handling, everything else. You can even get a pinch enough. flat, right? Where like you hit a curb or something and it kind of Absolutely. Pops but your tire. even more so, it, they, it, I've literally had people come in and they're like, hey, my bike used to go 20 miles. Now it's only going 12 miles. What's wrong? Hmm. It's you've got low pressure in your tires. Okay, that's so. a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, maybe while we're on that subject, did you have like uh, this is a, this is called a Presta valve right Correct. here, right? So it's a little bit skinnier, and it's usually got this sort of locking twist nut here. To inflate this, you actually have to unscrew it a little bit like that, right? And you can even take that all the way out. Well, this one you just back off, and you can release air pressure. And then to put air pressure in, some of uh, the hand pumps you can put directly on here, or if your more conventional tire pump has a Schrader valve, uh, you put this adapter on there, oh. screw that on. Now make sure that you loosen this first. Yeah. If it's tightened down and uh, you put this on there and you can't put air in there, you're calling me up going, why can't I put air in my tire? <laughs> you gotta loosen that little cap loosen up first. Bit. Okay, okay. And then put this on there and then tighten this down and then you can pump it up. Okay, great, great. A lot of bicycle pumps these days have, they're sort of adaptable, so you can have a Schrader valve or a Presta valve work with it, but that's worth calling out. If you go to a gas station, though, that's not gonna be the case. And oh, they only, because that's for cars, right? right. And so cars use Schrader You need valves. the little adapter. We give that for free to anybody that buys a bike that has that type of stem on it. That's nice. Make sure you put your cap back on there, tighten down the cap all the way, yep. and also make sure that this is tight too right here. Yeah. Get that nice and tight so against nice. the rim as well. Okay, great. That's that. Next probably would be uh, your chain. And a lot of people can maintain their chain at home. Uh, you wanna keep your chain clean and you wanna keep your chain lubricated. I've had customers come in the shop and the bike still looks brand new six months later and I'm just totally impressed. You know, I'm like, wow. And that's an A personality guy that's really, you know, if you invest three grand in your bike or even $1,000 in your bike, you wanna maintain it. Some people don't do any maintenance whatsoever though. Yeah. And they come in and they're dirty and, uh, 
you've got to clean the chain and then you've got to lube the chain. And when lubing the chain, a lot of leftover uh, lube will end up on the sprocket and in the uh, uh, the derailleur back here as well. Okay, so what is lubricant? Uh, you know, what are so a lot of people are thinking, you know, I've got some WD-40 over here. If you use WD-40 in a spray aerosol, that is not a lubricant. That'll actually dry your train out. Yeah, that's yeah. a penetrant. So don't get that confused. You have to use something that's a lubricant based. Uh, I, I sometimes will use TriFlow. And then WD-40 does make a product made specifically for lubing the chain. There it is. And look for it saying chain lubricant, Got not it. penetrant. Okay. You can pen use a penetrating oil to clean the chain and then follow that up with a lubricant. Okay. Excellent. Like that. That's it. Another common problem on disc brakes is they squeak. Oh okay. my gosh, it's driving me nuts. My brakes are squeaking like crazy. People say that, yeah. Hear that a lot. Take your caliper off, take, take the pads out. Spray them down with a uh, disc brake silencer, something that will keep them from squeaking, and that sometimes will do it. Nine times out of ten, though, it's just an adjustment. Okay. And to adjust the brake, you can actually do a visual down it, and a lot of times there is adjustment on each brake pad from the back side or the front side. And you want to align that so that the reel spins freely and it's not dragging. That's awesome. I definitely heard it before where it's like ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And if you have a slightly bent disc, you can't, it's difficult because mm. once you get the squeak out, then the brakes adjusted so loosely, you're not gonna stop. Yeah. At that point, it's time to either straighten the disc or replace the rotor is what they call them. Okay, you got yep. the rotors, you got the, the brake pads. Eventually, are they meant to squeak to let you know, like, hey, you need new brake pads, like in cars? No, not really, no. You, I mean, if you get it all the way down to the point where it's metal on metal, but I rarely ever see that. Most people are gonna come in and we're gonna point it out to them before it's to that point. Okay. And the brake pads last pretty long on, on bicycles. I have bikes that have gone 4,000 miles and they're still on the same original bank brake pads that came from the manufacturer. We call those guys adrenaline junkies. No brakes, they're just flooring it the whole way. Uh, Sam, while we were talking about the chain earlier, I wanted to reiterate that, yeah, you know, you use the proper lubricant, but you're not supposed to have this thing be like wet to the touch, right? You, you like want to wipe that off afterwards. Right? Yeah, but, you, uh, uh, but on the other end of that, the other end of the spectrum of what you just mentioned, Court, I have people come in, if I can grab your chain mm -hmm. and my hand doesn't come back with some kind of lube on it, yeah. it's totally dry to the touch, bad news, you've got it way too dried out and it's time to put some lubricant on it. So there's, you can have it too dry or you can have it too wet. Okay. I like to, I like to actually see a chain a little bit on the wetter side than the drier side, because it's, it's keeping it all lubricated. What does that do? Like it just keeps it from rusting or, you know? Not only does it keep it from rusting, but it gets a little bit of cushion between metal on metal. I mean, this, this is a metal chain, a metal sprocket. You're going through your derailleur down here. You want to keep it, you want to keep it lubricated, definitely. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Any other tips on the drivetrain? Like what happens when someone starts to hear like kind of the crunching and it's not shifting? Apart Your derailleur is just slightly off. And nine times out of 10, it's just an adjustment on the cable that you can do. In this case, there's no adjuster here. It would be probably up on the handlebar. So that's like up here where the kind of the shifters yeah, are. Yeah, and see that big knob right there? You can sometimes just turn it one direction or the other direction to get rid of that huh. crunching sound. And you're just lining up the derailleur back there. You can actually do a visual uh, if you come back here and you look directly behind the bike, if you look at the chain and you look at the gear, it should be pretty well lined up. And if it's pulling a little to the left or the right, you just have to make that adjustment to line it up. Huh. Another thing you'll see sometimes is somebody will load their bike in a car or they'll oh, drop their yeah. bike and they'll bend the derailleur or the, the hanger here mm. and that needs to be straightened out. And sometimes I literally just grab it with my hand and get it a little <laughs> bit straightened out. As, Pretty big guy though. I as, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just getting it lined up, you know? Okay, okay, great. Common sense there. Let's move forward onto the bike. I wanna show you something else, especially when you're prepping your bike and you're getting it out of the box. Okay. On certain manufacturers, your bottom bracket and your crank set, these bolts are not tight. And you've got to check those with an Allen wrench and make sure they're tightened up on there. Um, I'd say on a, on a yearly basis, we have a, somewhere between 15 to 20 bikes that an actual customer will take a brand new bike and the whole pedal crank will fall off on them. Jeez. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, on this particular brand of bike, we got to start double checking this stuff. And we've gotten that number much lower now by prepping the bike and checking to make sure those are tight. And you as the uh, owner of the bike should be checking that as well once in a while. Thanks for that heads up. I, I've heard something about certain models, um, some with bottom bracket motors like mid drives and others with the uh, hub motors. 
where things weren't tight and it kind of spun and rips the power cable. Have you heard, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, actually on the bottom bracket on this particular bike as well has a, a cadence sensitive sensor, I believe. And the wire comes in right from the bottom down there. And if that bottom bracket's not tight, it'll twist and that can cause damage. And then we have to replace that and get okay. it taken care of. Um, other things that happen is once a crank arm comes loose, especially on a square taper, it ruins it. And people try to tighten it and tighten it, hmm. ain't gonna work. It's time to replace the bottom bracket and the crank set, both. Interesting. Okay. Which isn't difficult to do if you have the proper tools. And any bike shop should be able to do that. Not even, you don't have to take it to an electric bike shop. Any bike shop should be able to replace a bottom bracket and the crank set. Okay, that's good. Okay, now, another thing a lot of people ask me when they come into the shop is, my bike, is it waterproof? Can I get my bike wet? <laughs> I'm afraid to even go through a puddle. You know what, I would say 95% of all electric bikes today that are on the market are water resistant, but they're not waterproof. Right. The motor, no problem. Your display, your throttle, no problem. You can put direct water on it. I wash the bikes down with a sponge. I'm wiping this all down. In order for you to ruin an electric bike, you would have to take a pressure washer and hold it. I'd say the most vulnerable part on an electric bike would be the controller, hmm. right? Now, in order to get the controller to, def to, to fail, you'd have to submerge it in water. Hmm. So it'd be like your bike accidentally falls into the swimming pool. Uh-oh, bad news. That Ouch. could possibly well, And kill don't it. turn it on, right? It's like your phone. Like, let it dry off if something like that happens. Yeah. Throw your controller in a bag of rice, right? <laughs> right, right. That's what I'm... And just so this one, the controller is so integrated, you can't even see it. But we had another e-bike over here. Uh, you can see this little control box back here. Here's the battery. There's the controller box. I don't know if there are any others that... Oh, there's lots of them. That know, they're always in different places. Yeah, here's like on a motive here. It's underneath. This is a very common place that a controller is. Is Batteries here. All the wiring for the bike comes into this box down here where the controller is located. Yep. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's the lowest point of the bike. Yeah. I've, I've had customers ride these motive bikes on rainy days and literally have that practically submerged. <laughs> and it doesn't fill that box up with water. You might have a little bit of water in the bottom area there and it'll dry out. Not enough to ruin the bike, not enough to uh, kill the controller by any means. Yeah, I've had some really nice road bikes and I was always just pretty careful about, when I cleaned it, I used something like that WD-40 stuff. And they have eco-friendly cleaners you can spray on, you use a paper towel. I tended not to use my sprayer because people said, oh, sometimes water can get into your, you know, your your head tube or different places and kind of rust it or... Yeah, know. another area would be cables. Like if you get water into this area here, yeah. you probably want to shoot some lubricant back in there afterwards. Tri-flow works great. And so, some people actually just use grease in this area hmm. uh, where your cables are. I'm, I'm really not concerned with... Anywhere that there's a cable, you want to try to keep it lubricated. Over oh. time, that can cause issues and your cable f fray or actually fail on you. But um, just keep it lubed and you're good to go. Okay, okay, yeah. sweet. Well, we've talked about a lot of different parts on this bike and I guess we, we touched on brakes earlier, but I wanted to reiterate that in addition to this sort of finger adjuster for, for trigger shifters, a lot of times brakes have that as well and you can kind of unscrew the far point and then tighten the inner point and see what that does is it like stretches the, the I don't know, sleeve yep. and then it make, it means the cable has to travel further. So over time as the cable stretch and you pull in the brake lever all the way back and it starts to almost come in contact with the lever, well that's when you can loosen this up. And you know what, as a shop I leave that adjustment for the customer. Mm -hmm. I always make the adjustment down below and if you do need to make that quick adjustment, this is the simple area for the customer to do. Yeah. And that's like you said, it's just extending the length of the housing, which is shortening the length of the cable, which will bring the arm up down below and bring the, cal the caliper more in contact with the brake pad. Okay. Any timing, you know, as far as like every 50, 100 miles, get the chain kind of up. You know, it depends or... on the kind of riding you're doing. If you're going off-road and you're mountain biking, every time, I recommend. But if you're riding on a road bike, uh, I was commuting 40 miles a day, and I could go a couple hundred miles before I, I think 50-mile interview is way too soon. You can go a couple hundred miles before you have to really like check your bike and lube it, you know? Okay. You don't have to be that diligent on it unless you're going off-road and you're getting it really dirty. Every time we go camping, the bikes come home, they get washed, they get lubed, 
and then they get put back out here as demos on the showroom <laughs> floor because we like to ride our bikes and know you know the you know specifics what's going on, on. Yeah, yeah have a, a good exactly idea right. so that's oh and when you're lubing it i think don't you you kind of switch through the the gears a little bit so Absolutely. that it gets on I run them up cogs. and down and let's talk about one last thing i think that's really important probably one of the biggest scariest part of owning an electric bike is i'm out on the trail i got a flat tire oh my god what uh, do i do yeah i do not recommend you try to remove the whole wheel and 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 you know, change out a tube. I recommend carrying a patch kit. Nine times out of 10, it's a puncher. It's not a blowout. Yeah. And you can change and fix the tube without removing the rear wheel. Really? What I mean by that is, take a tip, just take a pair of really simple tire irons with you that'll remove the bead on the tire, okay? okay. Peel and the, the bead, bead, off. bead is like, that's the tight, that's firm the part. edge right here. That so yeah, tucks into the rim. Right. So yeah. you're going to pull that bead off on one side of the tire, and you're going to try to find where that puncture is. By you know? And I think, yeah, you kind of listen. Like if you, you can look and see, and if you got a little hand pump, you're pumping it up, and you're looking for that hole. Nine times out of ten, too, you'll find the puncture point because the thorn will still be in there. The yeah. staple will be in there. The piece of wire will be in there. And you're like, obvious, okay, that's where I want to look from this point where the yeah. stem is. I'm looking for it. You pull the bead off. You find it. Then you're going to patch it. Okay. I just want to throw in here, this is my own personal brand of advice. Uh, sometimes if the thorn isn't there and you're kind of listening for it and you're hearing tss, but you're not sure where it is, like kind of lick, you know, or spit on the, on the tire and then you see it like bubbling right where it is. I'll put it up really close to my face. And your face is more sensitive. That You're going to feel shave. It's like... where, that, where that air is hitting you. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got to deflate it, put your patch on their weight. Put the and nine times out of 10, you can put the bead back on without even using a tire iron with huh. a bicycle tire. Okay. So that, that makes it easier. And you don't have this daunting process of, oh my gosh, what do I do? How do I get my rear wheel off? I'm dealing with the wiring harness now. Yeah. Let the bike shop, let the bike shop uh, take care of that for you. It's funny you say that too, because we were talking about the disc brake being lined up before. I've had it where if everything was perfect and then I took off like the front wheel and I put it back on, tightened it up and, and then the disc brake was rubbing and it's, it's like trying to line those things up, especially on the trail and get it spinning freely. It, it's a little more difficult. Flip your bike upside down, use your seat, your handlebars, when you drop your wheel in, make sure that it's all the way down on the dropouts. If it's still rubbing, what you do, Cord, is this. Check it out. There's two bolts right here and here on, on every brake caliper. Okay. These two bolts, when you loosen them up, free up the brake caliper where it floats around. Oh, cool. Then you pull the brake lever, and as you pull the brake lever, that's going to center it. Centers it. That's brilliant. And put, then tighten the other two bolts down. That's release. Awesome. And again, nine times out of 10, it'll be lined up and it'll spin that, freely for you. Perfect. Perfect. I love works. it. I love it. All right. A little, couple little tips here at Myron's. Also, head stay. Sometimes your headset will get a little bit loose. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's tightened down and clamped down here. Because other, yeah, I've seen it before where like you could, you know, squeeze the tire between your legs and, and pull on the handle and twist it if that's not It's tight. not tight enough, then it needs yeah. to be tightened up. What are some tools that, that maybe you carry here you can point out that you recommend always taking with you? I mean, uh, you want a helmet, right? That's not a tool, but. Well, in a way, I guess it is, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it, it's, uh, it's protecting your most important, valuable uh, asset up there, your brain. Sure. Uh, Allen wrench set, um, tire irons, yeah, patch kit. Yeah, a little. Uh, all you need is two tire irons, Allen wrenches, and what size Allen wrenches should I take? Three, four, five, and six pretty much dove everything on on most modern bikes. Okay. Uh, you might want to take a, a ten and an eight, but uh, rarely do you even need to use those uh, those tools. I personally carry those type of tools with me every time I go on a bike ride. Okay. And uh, I haven't been stranded yet. And the mini and, pump thing? Do you feel like you take a pump or? Uh, absolutely, a mini pump or a CO2. I prefer a mini pump myself. Yeah. Uh, that way I can adjust tire pressure on the trail. And I think one of the most important tools you can carry around with you is a cell phone. Ah. Not a bad idea cool. to remember to have one of those. That's the emergency backup last resort. Pull out the cell phone and call your buddy up and say, Come pick me up. You can text NASA with pictures and be like, what do I do? I'm stranded. And the mission control will help I've you. I've actually had people call me on, and I'm really? working. <laughs> and I literally will go out and pick them up if they're within the vicinity of my store. Oh, you're nice. And get them taken That's care so of. so great. And yeah. I should say, again, thank you so much for, yeah, Sam lets me review all the bikes and stuff that he has here. He's got one of the biggest shops 
that I've seen. He, he always gets new stuff, very experimental that way. And you try it out. Like you were saying, you go camp and you go to the desert here. We're in Fullerton, California. So it's near LA. We're kind of near LA. Yeah, we were camping out at Canyon RV Park about 20 miles away and we stayed two weeks there. That's a 40 mile commute and every single day we come into work and grab a different bike and go back out. That's fine. And so we got a lot of bikes with a lot of impressions from a 250 watt 24 volt folding bike to bikes that hit 30 miles an hour. And it was interesting on the Santa Ana River Trail with the various uh, people and the various uh, looks that I got <laughs> and the various comments, uh, but mostly positive. Wait, and you're a big guy. I mean, you know, your significant other, Kanika, she's she's a little bit shorter, she's a little bit lighter, and so you're getting kind of the his and her perspectives. We're 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 at opposite ends of the spectrum. So yeah. at 100 pounds and 260 pounds, that gives you a good you know, range of uh, body styles and sizes as to how the bike's gonna perform. Yeah. And we would try different levels of pedal assist, and in some cases, my wife would go there and back and not even pedal the bike, That's just awesome. to see what kind of range the battery had. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, fun. Any, any last thoughts on maintenance and all that? If you, don't, if you have a question and you're not sure, call your local bike shop, call your local electric bike shop, and most people are gonna have the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to give us a call. We're more than happy to inform you, educate you, and get you down the road so the smile comes on and you're having fun like a, like a kid again, awesome. riding your electric bike. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. All right, man.